Welcome to Tough Crowd. I keep reading about these discrimination lawsuits against McDonald's. First, a woman with a port wine stain was overlooked for a promotion. And today I was reading about a 400 pound man who's suing McDonald's because uh, they wouldn't hire him because he's kind of unattractive. And ugly people get abused all the time. You know, it's a hard world out there. It's a mean world. What's more insulting than that is these people who try to appropriate the ugly people's pain. Like these models that go, oh, I was ugly in high school. Well, you're 17 now, so when was that, three months ago? <laughs> you lying whore, go back to your table, do another line with that Eurocratic billionaire and his bisexual wife, all right? Uh, I think that uh, what we should do, I have a solution, is that we should have Ugly Appreciation Day once a year, and all the hot girls just agree to sleep with one ugly bastard that day, and all, all the handsome guys will sleep with one skag, I believe we used to use the word. You, you say to Jennifer Aniston, look, you had a good life. You don't mind if Brad gives Millie the mole covered nurse's aid a night she'll never forget? <laughs>
I know, believe me, I was saying the same thing I was saying. My mother's name, but not coming to that one, too. No, no, Four no. Also, there's a new hit reality show called Extreme Makeover on ABC where they give people plastic surgery for free. Sometimes about $50,000 worth of plastic surgery for free. Now, I don't believe in plastic surgery right now, because look at me, you know. I mean, God obviously has granted, bestowed some great gifts, but 10 years from now, I'm sure I'm going to have hair plugs and like false teeth and, you know, my pants will be bulging out like I tried to shoplift a live eel out of Petland discounts. I don't know. I'm getting aroused. Thanks. <laughs> so the point is, do you think it's good plastic surgery or bad? Well, I live in Los Angeles, so I can speak for plastic surgery. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's amazing. I mean, every day the bar gets raised because these women are getting it. So if you want to be competitive, and it's at the point where every woman has breast implants and lip implants and men have penis implants. I just want to see in a thousand years when they're digging up what was L.A. And everything will have decomposed except for the lips and the breasts and the penises. And they're going to be going, what the hell was this place? And by the way, just as a side note, I know you're going to not believe because he's not tall and he's Irish, but I've heard the rumor on... Greg, that he's packing a wallop, and I'm not kidding. Yeah, I've heard that too. You heard that too? Yeah, female, female comics comedians talk. talk. Yeah. Apparently, you got quite a little. Uh, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what else female comics do, otherwise, they wouldn't know the rumor. <laughs> you heard that too, right? Yeah, it's out there. <laughs> What about like a mother who gets plastic surgery and her daughter looks nothing like her? So she's like 16 years old going, look, you got to get that nose fixed or people are going to think you're adopted. Right, right. No, well, where are you I saw triplets with breast implants and there's got to be pressure on the third to get it or she's going to throw off the set. Yeah. <laughs> but I think that show also, the part of the problem with that show is that it, it glorifies plastic surgery and it makes it seem like plastic surgery is the first step, you know, the first thing you should do. And if you're a kid, for example, if you have a huge nose, now you think I got to get a, a nose job where maybe you should just try to get the rest of your head to be bigger. <laughs> it's a radical medical breakthrough yeah, right there. I hate, to, <laughs> I hate to make it racial again, but uh, black people aren't really getting plastic surgery. Huh? No, you're right. Mike, Michael issue. Jackson, he's uh... <laughs> He don't count. He don't count. <laughs> oh. Touche. <laughs> Okay, yeah, folks, to you. you get to watch the commercials. I have to be alone with these people and reassess what's going on here. We'll be right back. Oh, boy. Okay. This, the ban on assault weapons expires next year, and uh, House Republicans aren't planning on renewing it. Starting next year, Uzis and AK-47s could be legal again. Um, I didn't even know there was a weapons ban, by the way. Somebody forgot to tell Compton. Yeah, that's right. Now listen. Uh, and it really will affect rap for the worse. Let's face it. What is a rap without a Glock? Nothing rhymes with musket. Uh, creeping down the street with my single action shots, jam sometimes, damn this thing. Hey, watch the barrel, man. You almost took off my mirror. Does anybody think this assault weapons ban should not be banned? How about you, Greg Fitzsimmons? Greg Musket Fitzsimmons himself? <laughs> Greg the Musket. <laughs> Greg Automatic. Uh, rapid Automatic fire. Musket. Yeah, I'm the this is a rapid fire. She said it was... I've, uh, you know, I haven't seen a lot of deer recently, but I mean, these, these hunters talk about that they have the right to have the, the cutting edge technology. Deer have not evolved a lot unless they sprouted wings or developed the ability to disappear. <laughs> unless they burn you in a crack deal or something, right? You don't need an automatic weapon. Yeah, I mean, if it's a gang thing, that's one thing, but deer in general... <laughs> well, it's easy to have the sort of, like, uh, condescending, elite attitude when we live here in the, in the cities, but, you know, if you live out in, like, a ranch in Montana, you know, you gotta, you gotta shoot varmints. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> You know, and, and it's a lot easier if you can just spray the little bastards, you know? You don't want to no, I'm all for the automatic weapons on the farms because, you know, stray bullets when you live in Idaho, not a huge danger. Right. So get an assault weapon, but it's got to be attached to a tractor. That's the only way you can buy it. What if, you have, what if you've got a religious cult and a compound in Texas and you want to have sex with children without the feds getting up your ass? You're going to need to be armed. Now that's uh, true. Wait a minute. That was a. Hold on. We have to go back about 17 years. That was a David Koresh <laughs> reference. If anybody didn't. <laughs> it's never going to get banned because our crazy cracker president has to make sure crazy crackers who are in this NRA thing 
vote for him. There's about 50 million of them in it, so he's not going to ban this. you got to keep him happy because no one else is happy with the president right now. Unless, like, you better hope North Korea attacks so that he can have another war to have so that people like him again because right now those are the only people that are going to vote for him, and that's why he can't. He has to make sure that that... Well, that's, that's a good point, but let me ask you this, too. What about the fact that... Uh, but to... Oh, no, that's a good point. Um, all right. Damn it. Let's move on to the next part. What about the fact that yeah. he just called that reference dated and then followed it up with the word cracker? <laughs> you still say <laughs> I never say that. Not you, you, but I'm saying white guys. Just in the green room. Rich, uh, good, yeah. Take care. The whole idea of these guns, I don't understand why people think that there's an unlimited right to bear arms. I mean, the, the, in the Second Amendment, you get the right to bear arms because we need a well-regulated militia. That's what it says. And I don't think a bunch of rednecks blowing up watermelons with grenade launchers is a militia. Yeah, but, you... but in fairness, let's take this case, This what just happened today. Yanko Rosenbaum, the Jewish uh, Hasidic kid that got killed, got stabbed to death by... Lambert Canals and your cousin, I believe. Okay, I'm not sure. <laughs> but uh, this case he will be. if he had had a gun, the NRA would say if he had had a gun, he might not have died. Now that kid's him with a knife, so at least what? he wasn't breaking the Why did I say that? What do you mean by that? What I'm saying is that people talk easily about, oh, guns should be banned. But if I'm living in the middle of nowhere, in some place in Idaho, and I got my family there, you get the creeps if you're from New York. A bunch of crickets, there's a bunch of psychos out there. You want to have a gun to protect your family, man. Yeah, I don't, right? think, I don't think guns should be from banned what? completely. I'm just from psycho serial killers, from what? That only live in the woods? What are you watching? They live in the woods. In a 13 part six, yeah. stupid, that, you don't, no people get killed. killed. Oh yeah, right, really? Don't, they you have hockey masks too, there's, right? no, there's no serial killers? <laughs> <laughs> and they're all up in Idaho in the woods? Wherever they are. But the point in is, LA and, and, and it was, LA too. in New York. If the Night Stalker, whatever his name was, Richard Ramirez came into your house, you like to blow his brains out. So she said, no guns, but that son of a bitch was, did you ever see him? Isn't the Night Stalker older than my Waco reference? I think the Night Stalker was around the time of the Waco guy, actually, correct? <laughs> you know what's killing us? Those stupid Discovery Channel specials. <laughs> We're living 15 years in the past. But don't you think the reason America hasn't had an a internal revolution, besides the, serial, the Civil War, is that they, uh, the police know everyone's armed and they're afraid to attack? The police would not attack us. <laughs> you can read those damn right police, left wing. The police are waiting to attack? Well, I'm yes. sure they are. Oh, oh no, you have that discussion amongst yourselves. Yeah. Yeah, I will. Yeah, they're not ready to attack anybody. <laughs> hey, all I know is the last time we argued about police brutality, I walked out of the cellar with McDougal, and five scared young black youths scared of getting shot by the cops were yelling, white bastard, cop, cracker. Crack, I, this was a long time ago. That's and, uh, terms, that's terms and the cops are just standing like, like this. <laughs> cops are standing like this, like looking at each other, like don't say anything. So please, that's absolutely not them. true. I swear I wasn't God. even there and I know it's not true. I <laughs> swear on my mom, I swear. What do you mean it's not true? They Damn say, I'm a bastard and the cops. They're, they're rolling down the windows of the whatever it was, SUV. And they're rolling down like this. <laughs> the cops are right here, standing here on the dual street. <laughs> and you go, yo, you white crack. Are you sure that wasn't the song that was playing out the Jeep? <laughs> Oh, yeah. Man, really? I, I swear to God, oh. you're living in the dream world. Every white cop I know, all they say is, I'll never stop black people because I don't want to lose my job. That's what they say. Really? So let's not pretend it's just a lose. Not all Boston. And they say that when they're over your house eating cookies and having milk, right? <laughs> Colin, I'll never hit one of them in the head again with a billy club. Hey, what's that, I'm sorry, I think alcohol reference too. Taser and Glocks. <laughs> sorry about that, billy club was... Uh, We're going to be right back. <laughs> right back after this massage. I'll say this much, democracy is like alcohol, not everyone can handle it. And you don't know what your tolerance level is until you take your first sip. Let's look at the family histories of newer democracies to see if they have a chance at drinking from the sweet chalice of freedom, in moderation of course. Russia. Well, the Soviet Union collapsed in 1991 and Russia's been trouble ever since. Nuclear weapons for sale, international prostitution rings, the mafia, we should have seen this one coming. From Peter the Great to Tsar Nicholas I to Joseph Stalin, Mother Russia hasn't met an iron fist she hasn't liked. At night, Russia dreams of being dominated by a strong ruler like myself. Is that what you want, Russia, huh? Are you a dirty girl? Who's been a naughty country? 
Say, Colin, I want you to clamp down on free speech, you little whore. Say, Colin, you can throw your political opponents in jail. Say it, Russia, say it! <laughs> Serbia and Montenegro is one country. It used to be two countries, Serbia and Montenegro. <laughs> but in February of this year, they joined forces to become Serbia and Montenegro. If you can't play Serbia and Montenegro on a map, it's in Eastern Europe where it shares a border with Bosnia and Herzegovina. It's like uh, 101 Balkan nations over there, all right? Don't let those angel faces fool you. That whole playpen is trouble. World War I started in that playpen, but Serbia and Montenegro does have an endless supply of tall white guys who can shoot hoops. It's the only country that stops the NBA from being all black. <laughs> ah, the stands. Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, Tajikistan, Kazakhstan, Kazakhstan. This hot Muslim boy band from Central Asia fired its manager, the Soviet Union, back in 91, and it's been a bad episode of Behind the Music ever since. The boys have been accused of everything from harboring terrorists to polluting the Aral Sea. And then there's Tajikistan, the sensitive stand, who broke hearts worldwide when he was arrested for trafficking heroin. What a disaster. Maybe the stands can get Russia to take them back. All right, now, here she is, a swaddling babe, Iraq. A democracy since last month. She's in stable condition in a preemie ward, being tended to by doctors Rumsfeld and Bush. What a cutie pie. We gotta be careful with this one. The Shiite Muslims wanna make Iraq an Islamic democracy. That's not good enough for my little Putin. Look, it's a tough road, this democracy. Lots of countries can't handle it. Iraq's going to need a lot of help. We just got to make sure that America gets full custody. No visits from Russia or any other country that bailed on the war unless they're supervised by us. People are demanding an end to discrimination against them. Ugly people, I couldn't seem to get that off the ground, but we're going to talk about that sometime soon. <laughs> soon, they're actually doing this march in Washington, I believe, unless this was a joke, but I thought it was serious, called the Million Pound March, is that true? <laughs> I swear to God. <laughs> What other groups should be protected from discrimination and why? Patrice O'Neill. <coughs> aside, aside from black people, uh, leave Indians from India alone. I know they look like suicide bombers, but they're not. No, no terrorists wear sweatpants and two socks and tuxedo shoes with such pride. <laughs> And do, and do you think a woman who hated this country could give out bourbon chicken samples at the mall with such purpose? <laughs> leave them alone and let them, leave these folks alone and let them worship the statue of the lady with the six arms and the Sinbad swords <laughs> in peace. <laughs> Lori, come on. Uh, this one is very personal to me, Colin. Right. Uh, I want to stop drug dealers in Harlem from discriminating against the blonde, blue-eyed, white woman who lives in their building. <laughs> What's up, Mr. Jimenez? You think you can't sell me crack because I'm white? I have to take two trains and a bus to the East Village to buy my crack? When I knock on your door at 3 a.m. on a Thursday with a $10 bill in one hand and imaginary roaches crawling up the other? You think it's okay to say, sorry, stores closed, snowflake? No soy la policia, Mr. Jimenez. No soy la policia! Ah. Oh. <laughs> Greg Girardo. That, that was racist. <laughs> we, uh, we need to stop age discrimination. I tried to help my son find a part-time job recently, and no one would hire him because he's two. <laughs> it's, it's shameful that in our country, children are denied a right that kids in Guatemala take for granted. <laughs> Let's end all ageism. If a 15-year-old boy can have sex with a 15-year-old girl, then why can't R. Kelly? <laughs> Ever heard of the Equal Protection Clause? Ooh. Maybe the government shouldn't have a say in how a blossoming young woman chooses to deal with her daddy issues. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, it was one phrase. Oh, wow. Greg Fitzsimmons. I think we gotta stop discrimination in the strip clubs against strippers who have C-section scars. Oh. 
I mean, these are the women that need it. They have a child to support, not just a coke habit. That's right. The beautiful ones don't really need the money. Let's base our dollars we give away in strip clubs on needs. Now, I have a wife and a child. When I'm asked deep in a lap dance with a woman wearing nothing but body glitter and a fake smile, I want to know that my money's going to support a hungry child. Or six. Because I'm all about family values. Where are we going? Oh. True, true. I say, what's the matter? Yeah, nothing. What are you belly aching about when I'm about to do my thing? Sorry. You think, it's, you think I'm that much of a cool pro you can yell in my ear while I do it? I can, so go ahead. <laughs> I would say that the, uh, we should stop discrimination against the corny. There are a lot of corny people out there who just say the wrong thing all the time or do the wrong thing. They're never hip or cool enough for our slick little society. <laughs> I think that if you want to listen to Michael Bolton or NSYNC or whatever, that should be your business. If you want to put up a you know, hang in there, baby, cat, sign in your office. <laughs> that is fine by me, all right? <laughs> I mean, I've got my own streaks like that anyway. I personally can't get out of the house in the morning unless I high-five my framed poster of Captain Corelli's Mandolin. <laughs> Great movie. And then I do deep knee bends while I blast uh, One Night in Bangkok on my clock radio. <laughs> we now return you to your regular, more attractive programming. Good night. <laughs>